Okay, so I goofed up. I got the cut one degree out. It's an easy mistake to make and it's an easy mistake to prevent. I'll have to make another one because it's going to bug me. Here I've got a rotary table and instead of having a chuck where I'm not guaranteed that the face is going to be true to that, I'm going to make a stop there and a stop there and clamp it down. Being a rotary table, we can just set our readout to the right diameter, right radius, I mean, and uh, set the stop by bumping this until the until the edge finder kicks off, like so. <laughs> That gives us a centered biscuit without the need for a four jaw chuck. So I've returned to zero. 14 minute, 14 millimeters per minute. 315 RPM. Nine millimeter per minute. We want a seventeen millimeter hole, so there's twelve mils, there's fourteen mils, there's sixteen, which will give us a finish cut of half a millimeter. Okay, it will get noisy soon. So that landed at 15.98. We'll take it to 16.48. So that landed at 16.55. I didn't do the clamp up. Got to keep your eye on the ball when you're videoing and machining. Nominally 10 divisions short. That landed straight on our nominal 10 divisions shy of 17 millimeters. Okay, let's try that. That's where it landed for some reason. Just where I want it. 05 over, which will mean it'll be size for size after the bearing on the shaft. Nice smooth finish. And the next step is to put three keyways in it. 1800 RPM. 6mm cutter. 
8 mil radius, 16 mil pitch, 9 millimeters per minute. Zero degrees, zero minutes, locked. It's going to get loud soon. So now we are at 120 degrees, which will do the 3 degree mark there. We lock that up. She's going to get loud soon. So now we have our 120 degree H2O type set up here. We're on 240, 30 minutes. This degree is four, this dial is four and a half degrees per turn. She's gonna get loud soon. <laughs> Okay, so now we've got our uh, keyways roughed out. We'll have a half mil finish. I've lubed it up with coconut oil. So we're on 17, 18 and a half. Sorry, 8 and a half. She's going to get loud. <laughs> So we've done our keyways on the 17mm mark, uh, smack on the equator, and the next step is to put a little register around here for dialing in uh, once I get it into the lathe to trim down the billet size to the uh, blank size for the gear. 10mm cutter, 900 RPM, zeroed on the touch off. I'll go for three millimeters deep. She's going to get loud soon. <laughs> Half mil depth of cut. So I'll come back when I've achieved my full depth. Uh, it'll eventually get deeper than three millimeters, but uh, all I need for now is the three mils depth. So I'm going to knock a chamfer on all these holes and the actual edge itself. So that'll be the next operation. It's going to get loud.
Okay, so I've had a rest and I've come back and this is running in the lathe uh, within about O2. I will now turn the diameter to the billet size according to calculation as per Hercus manual. Okay, so I've turned the billet diameter down to the blank diameter for the gear as per Hercus manual. And I've touched the edge of the cutter on here, come in half the cutter width plus half the billet diameter. I've also painstakingly gone around and marked 7.2 degrees each. These figures are in minutes, degrees and minutes. And I've shown what it will show up on the dial. So 42 and 54 are actually 12 and uh, 24 on the 4.5 degree per Per turn dial here. So hopefully that will stop me making the same mistake twice. Okay, next thing is I've touched that off on the first scrape and set my dial indicator against something roughly in line with the center of the axis. Now the reason for that is the gib on the y-axis is not the best and when you put the clamp on there's about uh, 0.15 of deflection uh, red on this dial when you put the clamp on which is all the way over here is particularly that clamp okay so according to the Hercus manual 14 dp requires 161 thou of depth of cut. I'll convert that to metric and write down a roughing and a finishing dimension. So 3.5 depth of rough and 4.08 for finish. Okay, so we've come in our 3.5 millimeters for roughing we're on our zero on our zero we're ready to rough out the first tooth Okay, 22 millimetres per minute feed. And we are going up. This will take a while. So this is what it looks like on the roughing pass. I'll come back when I've done all 50. Okay, so we've done our 50 teeth at the roughing depth. I've come in to the finish depth and taken care of the y-axis lock, uh, 15 divisions. And now we're ready to start at our depth. Finish that.
I'll come back when we're done. As you can see, it's slightly deeper than the rest. Multiply that by 50 and I'll see you soon. Okay, so we've got all 50 teeth fully cut to full depth without any hiccups. The next step is to put a radius in there and there, flip it over, do the same thing, then put some holes in it. Uh, but because we dialed this to 0.01 run out, and that was machined in the same setup as the bore, uh, we can just cut this without worrying about the uh, the dialing surface. Okay, so we have machined a nice radius in in the fillet there and in the fillet there, and that leaves this thickness uh, about five millimeters. Now, I've got a six mil. 16 mil shank here at a radius of 27 millimeters which gives us a circumference a pitch circumference of 169 millimeters near enough divide by 8 and that gives us a wall thickness of about 5 millimeters and we're talking about this wall thickness if that's 16 and 169 divided by 8, near enough to 21. That means there's half of 21 on that side, and half of 21 on that side, and half of 21 on that side, and half of 21 on that side. So you can basically say it's got a 5 mil wall thickness, which is just what I want. It also gives us enough room in the in the web between the two circles to uh, put another little hole. Okay, so I've pilot holed it with a 12 or 11, and now I'll go in with a 16 mil roughing end mill at 630 RPM, and then we'll see what we can do about putting a hole up here in the spandrel. Okay, we had a bit of overheating on the blunt end mill but it looks like we can fit a five mil end mill sorry five mil drill up in the corner of that span drill okay so aside from deburring everything that's removed enough weight without compromising the strength and that completes the project I will do the same to the other gears with the dicky tooth uh, before we send them off to heat treat. So this is what it looks like when it's all cleaned up. We've got the crown gear here which will take off to the tail shaft. We've got a dog clutch which lets this slip off the dog clutch and engage with the winch drum gear. But the keyways in here also let the input shaft drive the crown gear but when you slide it up here it's no longer engaged with the crown gear but is engaged with the winch drum gear Ding. 